Hello and welcome to Community Mapping Uganda. My name is Dr Johnny Hook and I'm going to show you how to take part. All you need to do is click the Start Mapping button and when you click that button it will open up a new tab for you containing our mapping tool. And what we have here is two maps of the same place. The one on the left uh, contains all the data that we have in our database about this location. And the one on the right is satellite imagery that shows what's actually there. And the simple question we have to ask ourselves is, is there anything missing from the map on the left that's clearly in existence on the ground in the map on the right? And the answer here is yes, there is. You can see there's little huts, little buildings lying around, there's lots of little tracks um, show, uh, shown there where people um, could walk or drive along. Um, and crucially, the obvious thing here is the only thing on this map is this big road up here. Uh, you can see that's obviously a tarmac road uh, that's visible here on this map, but any of the details have been missed. We haven't mapped those yet. So this is a good example of a square that needs mapping. And what we do is we say, yes, this square needs mapping and we take control of it and, uh, and fill in the map. That's, that's what this whole project is about. Now, if there was nothing that needed mapping because either the satellite imagery was empty or because everything was already done on the map, we could click that red button there and that would log in the database that no further mapping is needed in this location. If we weren't sure for any reason, then we could click on the blue button. If perhaps there was a big cloud in the way on the satellite imagery or it was a bit fuzzy or you just couldn't quite see what you're doing, uh, then we'd struggle. But here we can see clearly there's a big track there and if we zoom in a little, we can see there's some buildings um, and none of those things are here on the map uh, to our left. So what we're going to do is say, yes, we need to map this area, start mapping now. And that will open up a new tab again. And ordinarily this would take you straight into a map editor, but on the first time you click it, you'll probably have to log in um, to a, a website called OpenStreetMap, and that's where we draw our data. Um, if you don't have an account with OpenStreetMap, which I imagine most people won't, you can simply click register now, you fill in a short form, um, they send you an email to confirm your details and then you'll have login details and you can simply type those in here, username and password and click login. And you only have to do that the first time that you press it. And if you uh, go in to OpenStreetMap, you'll then be able to see the editor. Um, it's asking me here if I want to restore previous things I've mapped. I'm going to say no in this case. Um, it might ask you that question. It might ask you if you want to see a tour uh, of the tool. You can just press no there and um, say you want to start mapping immediately. Um, or it might just take you straight to this map here. Um, what we can see is just the same view, the same satellite imagery as we were looking at a moment ago. The only difference here is that we can't see the square, unfortunately. That's something we aren't able to fix. Um, it, it's a bit irritating, but it's not a major problem. And the reason for that is it doesn't matter if you drift outside of your designated square a little bit. Okay. We know that the square is basically just the middle of the screen. Um, and as you can see that road, which remember was just in the top corner of the square and these little huts were just at the bottom of the square, but it doesn't matter. Any data that you create for us is very, very valuable and will go towards dramatically improving or even saving people's lives. So if you do too much mapping, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can always flick back if you want to the original screen to have a look at your square uh, in more detail. Um, but as I say, if you wander out of it a little bit, it doesn't matter. Uh, we ask people to try and stick to them just so we can keep track of how much mapping we've done, but it, it doesn't matter too much, so don't worry. Okay, so as, as I said, there are two types of things to map here. We've got some tracks and some huts, okay? Um, and th the way we do that is we just draw them onto the map, okay? And everything we draw onto OpenStreetMap is di divided into three different uh, types of object, okay? We have points which are things like uh, trees, telegraph poles, lamp posts, uh, post boxes, anything very, very small. We don't use points very much uh, in our project uh, because there aren't a lot of point features. The only thing you might wish to map with a point normally in Uganda would be perhaps 
um, a, a large tree, but we, we don't insist that people draw those. So that, that's up to you. Things you do use a lot are lines. So lines are used to draw anything like a track, a road, a stream, a river, a railway, any long features like that will be drawn with a line. And then anything that has a shape to it, so a building, a car park, uh, even a country, will be drawn as an area. Okay, and all we have to do is decide what we're going to draw and pick the correct tool. And I'm going to start with a track, I think. Okay, so that would be a line. And I click on the line. Now, ideally, if you're going to draw a line, you want it to connect to another line. Now, that isn't always possible, and it's okay if it doesn't. Uh, you will get some warnings telling you about that, but it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Um, the main thing uh, we, we want to do, if we can connect, is to click, make sure we've clicked on an existing line, and that'll connect it to it. Okay, so we click there, and we've started drawing our line. We have this little tool. And we can zoom in with our mouse wheel, or we can use our arrows on our keypad to... Um, move the map around and make it easier for us to see where we're going. And all we do is click along the path that the line takes. Um, it, you don't have to be you know, super precise, but the, the closer you can get to the actual track, the better. And you just go along like that. Um, and you can keep going for effectively as long as you like. It's sometimes hard to see exactly where it goes. Um, but you can see we pick up the, the obvious track again here and I can use my arrows to navigate and keep on going uh, and just simply click along. You can get quite fast at this. Uh, it doesn't take very long and this data will go straight into the database. It will be used on our paper maps, on our digital maps and in the sat satellite navigation devices that our drivers use to get the clinic out to communities. Okay, now I've hit a point I'm going to stop here. Um, because I'm near some huts, so I'm going to double click and that will end this track. Okay, and I'm going to say what it is. Now, it, track might already appear in your list if you've used it before, but you can simply type in the search box track and that will give you some options. And I'm going to say, yep, yeah, this is a track. Okay, um, and once I've filled all that in, I can be quite happy. Uh, and just click that little X there, and that's a track in the database. Done. Okay, very, very simple. Um, the next thing I'm going to map is probably this hut. Okay, so you can see these are quite small features. These huts are only two or three meters um, in diameter, they're uh, two or three meters tall, and they're um, small uh, sort of clay constructions with a thatched roof, and there's a lot of these in Uganda. You can actually see them on our main web page. These, these are what we're looking at from the top, okay? These huts, okay? These are uh, the, the main thing people live in in this region. Now, ordinarily, if we're drawing around, say, a big square building, uh, we get our area tool, and we draw, let's pretend there's a building here, around our square like that, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, we don't have to match the, the round shape of these, and I'll show you why. So if you get your area, the best way to map something that's round is to just draw a triangle inside it. So just one, two, and then double click for three. Okay? Um, we're then gonna call it a hut. So I'm gonna type hut in here, and click on hut, and then click on the X button, and we have a hut. Okay, obviously that isn't very good, is it? We don't want a triangle shape there, we want something round. So what I need to do is click in the middle of the hut, okay, and the little dots will come back. And then if I right click in the middle of the hut, I can click on this circularize button and that'll make it into a circle. I'll click off it and I have a perfectly circular hut that fits exactly into the footprint of the building, which is fantastic. And I'll do another one here. I can click on area, I can draw a little triangle, one, two, double click for three. I can just click on hut and say it's a hut, um, click on X. And then the other way I could do that is if I click on the middle of it again and just press O on my keyboard and it'll do that for me as well, which is fantastic. Very, very useful little tool. Um, 
The other thing I can do, I'm just going to find another hut to draw. There's one down here. Okay, I can click on one I've already drawn. If there's lots the same size, I can use uh, Control C, as in the same as if I'm copying a feature. And then I can go down to where my next hut is. And then use Control V. Okay, and that puts a new hut exactly the same on my mouse, and I can put that wherever I like. And then every time I press and then I click off it and it's gone. Every time I press Control and V from now on, it will just reappear and I can just keep on doing that, adding new huts as I go. Okay, and if I want to get rid of that, I can just press Escape. That's very handy um, because sometimes this is quite sparse here. Sometimes there'll be lots of huts, there could be hundreds, and it makes it very, very quick to just copy and paste uh, those huts again and again and again. Uh, but only do that, of course, if they're all the same size. You don't want huts that don't fit very well. Um, there's other things here I can put in. So uh, I'm going to put another little length of track here uh, and say one, two, three, four, five. Lovely. Um, so that's track again and stop. Um, and then what I'm going to do is fill in these areas. So you can see there are areas around these huts. Um, that are, need, need marking out really, it's because that, that would help us join up these tracks. So I'm going to get an area, and I'm just going to draw, and you can see if I click on the white dots on these tracks, it will make them part of the boundary, and that's, that's very important. So I'm going to just include that hut and bring that round to here, double click to finish again. And then I'm going to call this a residential area. Okay, now there aren't great, um, you know, there's not, not, not something that really sounds suitable to call these areas, but it's very helpful to map them. So residential area seems to be the best fit and one that's quite widely used in this area. So again, I've called it residential area. I just click on the X and it's gone. Okay, and that's about all there is to it. All I need to do now is continue adding in tracks. Um, if some of them uh, look a bit smaller, I could call them footpaths instead of tracks. So um, I often say if it looks like I could get a vehicle down it, I would call it a track like this one. This one perhaps is a bit smaller than that. So I can click on it, um, click here on the arrow, and I could change that to footpath. Okay, so let's call it footpath, and I'll stop there. And then that, it looks slightly different. Once again, please don't obsess about the classifications you give them. Um, if it's got tarmac on it, I would call it a road. If it looks quite big, like you could get a vehicle down it, I'd call it a track. Um, and if it looks quite small, I would call it a footpath. But please don't worry, it doesn't matter if you get them slightly wrong, okay? There's no way that we can know. The important thing is, if you get the geometry in there, if you've drawn it in, our team on the ground can fix the classifications for you, okay? So say I've now finished uh, mapping, uh, or I've drawn quite a few features and I want to just save them. All I'd need to do here is click on the Save button. Okay, so these features I've added so far are not yet um, in the database. Okay, I have to press Save. And I'm going to uh, just put a little comment in here. Okay, so this comment is going to say, um, University of Manchester, community mapping. Okay, it doesn't matter what you write in there, you can write anything you like, you could write your name, you could write what you're studying, it's just a comment. Normally you'd say what you've added. So I'm going to add to that uh, huts and tracks. Okay, um, and then you'll have some warnings potentially. So this warning is telling me that one of my paths isn't attached to anything. And I know that, that's fine, because I'm going to draw a residential area here that will connect it up. So that's okay, and I don't need to worry about that. It will also warn you if you, for example, drawn some huts and forgotten to classify them. Uh, if that happens, uh, that's also fine. You can just click on uh, the warning and it will take you back to the hut and you can give it a classification. You then uh, come down to this little form. Please do not tick this box, okay? Um, as part of community mapping, our association, we will check data that's been created. 
so you don't need to ask people at OpenStreetMap to do it. Because we're hoping to generate a lot of data, we don't want to be overloading them with work. So please do not tick this button um, because someone will be checking all of your data anyway. And then you simply press upload and that will take a couple of seconds to just upload the changes to the OpenStreetMap server. Um, and it's done. Okay, so let's give you a little message saying you've done so. Um, and you can just click on the X to get rid of that. And then we can carry on and that's great. All right. Um, now, there's one or two little gotchas. Um, one thing to be wary of is, I'm just going to give you another example. So I'm going to draw in that missing area that we talked about. Okay, so I think there's another residential here, area here that we can draw in. Um, and I'll double click to finish. Now, sometimes what happens is someone will click on one of the dots instead of the area. So you can see now the dot is highlighted and not the area. And that will mean you get a different list of things. So if I tried to search for hut, it wouldn't come up. And if I tried to search for residential area, it wouldn't come up. And that's because it thinks I'm trying to classify this dot. So if that happens, just make sure you click either in the shape um, or on the line, but in the shape is the easiest thing. And then you can say, yeah, okay, that is a residential area. And then click on the X and it's done. OK, and what I'll do now is I'll just keep on going, filling in the roads, the paths, the huts and so on and so forth until I'm satisfied that this area has been mapped. OK, and when I've done that, all I need to do is go back to the tool. All right, so I need to make sure I've saved everything, which I haven't. So I'll click save and I'll go through the same process again. I don't need to worry about that now, but that's uh, something I would need to do before I close this tab. And then I go back here and I say, I've finished mapping this square. Okay, and that means it's logged in our database and they'll say, this square has been dealt with. We don't need to check it. Uh, we don't need to get someone else to work on it. Um, it's been done and that's great. I'm not going to click that because I didn't. Uh, I didn't finish it. So I'm gonna click on, I've given up mapping this square. And that simply means that we log that someone has done some mapping on it, but there's more to do. And that's also very valuable information. Um, so I just click on it. I've given up mapping this square, which is perfectly fine. And then it will give me a new square. Dead easy. OK, that's all there is to it. Um, if you so this is actually given me, I think, the same square again, which is uh, fine. Um, if that happens, you can just press the blue button and it'll give you a new one and you can just keep going until you find something. OK, so this one, once again, you can see the road there has been mapped already but this track running across hasn't. So you can draw that in um, and then come back to here um, and to log it as an area that's been mapped. And in doing so, we're slowly filling in the whole area and working across the whole north of Uganda, this Acholi region that I was talking about earlier. And the more mapping we do, uh, the more people we can help, the more lives we can save. On average, remember every 50 huts you put in, uh, will mean someone gets a leg and adding in those roads and paths means we can get to them in the most efficient way possible um, which obviously means we can help more people so anything you can map is very very valuable to us once you're happy you've finished you can just uh, make sure you've ticked it so if you've got these three buttons instead of the other two um, you can just close these tabs and you're done and once again thank you very much for joining in um, I hope you enjoy it I and mean, crucially please remember you can do this anytime you like this website is always open uh, it's incredibly valuable and you can build up your own profile on OpenStreetMap um, generate a lot of data it really is a worthwhile way to spend your time um, so yeah once again thank you so much on behalf of myself the project team and the people of northern Uganda uh, we hope you have fun and if you have any uh, questions or problems you can contact me at jonathan.hook at manchester.ac.uk and those details are also available at the bottom of the main website as well okay